All right, shalom, my name is Austin and you are watching the 144Kids Shabbat Recap on the Kids Action Bible Show. Uh, if you're brand new, you can support our ministry or check out everything that we do with 144Kids at 144Kids.org. Has everything you need to know about our ministry, everything from merch, who's involved, what's coming up, so check out their website. Now, let's get to the message. So today we are in this series called The Rebellion. We're in this series called The Rebellion, right? A rebellion is to, to, to remove away from the authority, to take away and do something completely different, right? That's where we get the word rebel from. And so we're talking about the rebellion. Specifically, we're talking about Israel in Exodus chapter 32. So let's dive in and figure out what this, what this statue thing is all about. It's time for the debar of the day. First, we can't go anywhere without the debar of the day. Obviously, you know better. So today's debar of the day is stiff neck, stiff neck, cauché. Cauché is how you pronounce it. And so to be stiff necked is to be unwilling, stubborn, or unfriendly. You can also check the Strong's, uh, uh, the lexicon Strong's number here. It's 87186. Cauché, cauché, to be unwilling or stubborn or unfriendly friendly right that's that's what that's how the father describes israel anyone that is stubborn from keeping his commandments from believing the messiah from turning from their ways and following him they get the label of stiff neck you know if you have a stiff neck i think there's something that could help you could always try and let me tell you before commandment guard i was stiff as a pillar of salt <laughs> introducing commandment guard the breakthrough medicine that will set you free from your stiff neck misery. Yes, of course. How can we forget commandment guard? You know what I'm saying? Right? Just keep this guard the commandments and it helps with stiff neck. You get it? You see what I did there? Okay. All right. Let's, let's keep going. All right. So let's read scripture together. This is Exodus chapter 32 verse 1 through 4. It says, Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come make us Elohim that shall go before us. As for this Moses, they even call him, like, they treat like they don't know this guy. As for this Moses, well, I mean, some of them might have just re-met him. The man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And Aaron said to him, and at this time, Aaron has been anointed, he's the high priest, right? Like he's in charge. Aaron said to them, break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off golden earrings, which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and he fashioned it. It means he made something. He fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. Then they said, this is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. So this is what they were doing. Like, check this out. So they, they took some of the gold, the earrings, all the gold that they had. They put it in something like this. This is like a kiln, right? It's like an oven specifically for melting hot, uh, melting hard objects like, like aluminum and, and gold or sometimes pottery, right? And they, they took that and then they made it into a statue like this over here, this golden calf, which is terrible. This is terrible. They say, hey, we don't know if that Moses guy is coming back. So what we're going to do is we're going to create something to worship on our own. Guys, we cannot do that. We have to make sure that we stand firm and believe that the most high Yah is going to come back and return, right? We cannot go run back to what we used to run back like dogs to vomit to the past Elohim, go worship other Elohim. I'm going to put my faith in me. I'm going to put my faith in the world. I'm going to put my faith in money. No, no, no. You have to wait and put your faith in the most high. We can't do like Israel did here, but sadly Israel continues to do this. We continue to do this. And so this is a lesson that unfortunately a lot of people are still learning. Let's keep reading. This is verse five through six. So when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation. It said, tomorrow is a feast to Yah. Then they rose early on the next day, offered burnt offerings and brought pre peace offerings. And the people sat down to drink and they rose up to play. This makes this 10 times worse. Not only did Israel create and erect this golden image, this, this false uh, this false guy, this false idol, not only did they fashion this guy that they worship out of their own hands, but they, they celebrated a festival to it. They took, they say, you know what? We're going to celebrate. We're going to create a feast to it. And you can see them around here dancing and partying and they have so far and now they're worshiping this golden calf. This is terrible. 
this is terrible. We're gonna talk about a lot about this about the next video, but this is awful, awful stuff. Now let's keep reading. This is verse seven through 10. And Yah said to Moses, go get down for your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded calf and worshiped it and sacrificed to it. Not only did they worship it, not only did they bow down and they humbly go, we serve this thing that they created, but they also sacrificed to it with burnt offerings. Guys, double whammy, that is terrible. He said they not only, not only have they made it, they worshiped it and they sacrificed to it and said, this is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Yah said to Moses, I have seen this people, and indeed it is a stiff necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone in my wrath may burn high against them that I may consume them, and I will make you a great nation. So even while Moshe was on the mountain, sitting there communing with Yah, he, Yah is looking at the people on right past Moshe. He goes, wow, look, these people, these people, like I can hear what they're saying and it hurts my heart. And he said, these people are indeed a stiff neck people. Kashi, there's the devour of the day. There's the word of the day. He said, they are stiff neck people. They need some commandment guard. They need to guard the commandments. He said, now leave me alone because I'm going to consume them. And I'm going to start over with you, Moshe. I'm going to create a great nation with you. Obviously, we know, based off the scriptures we have access to, this isn't the first time he did this, right? With Noah, back with the flood, he looked at Noah and said, you know what? You've been perfect in your generation. I'm going to keep you alive. I'm going to consume and kill everybody else. And that's what he did with the flood. I didn't know what he was about to do with this. But we're going to see how it kind of takes place to see if, if anything happens past this. I don't know. Like I said, stiff neck people. Don't want to be stiff neck. Need some commandment guard, right? Everyone looks like this donkey right here. Trying to move a donkey is super hard because they are known to be stubborn animals. They are going to do what they want to do. And they're very strong, contrary to popular belief. They're very, very strong. Um, they're great when they are doing what they're supposed to be doing, when they're helping, when they're serving. They're some of the strongest animals that you can have and go distances with that carry heavy weight um, three, four times the, the, their actual body weight. But when they are stubborn, they are some of the worst animals. It's, they're hard to tame. And so this picture, it, it proves it. And so we are like those donkeys sometimes. The father is looking at Moshe and go, look, you and all those donkeys down there. He said, they don't want to move in this direction. They are stubborn and stiff-necked people. This is what he thinks of us sometimes. So let's continue reading. Verse 11. Then Moses pleaded with Yah, his Elohim, and said, Yah, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power, with a mighty hand? So this is Moshe interceding, right? He's doing something where he's praying on behalf of Israel. He's trying to step in and mediate and go, hey, Father, please reconsider this. He says, why should the Egyptians speak and say he brought them out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains and consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath and relent from this harm to your people. Remember Avram, Isaac, Israel, your servants whom you swore by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven. In all this land that I have spoken of, I give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever and ever. So Yah relented, wow. Yah relented from the harm which he said he would do to his people. Guys, we can't determine what the Father's gonna do. We have no idea what the Most High is gonna do. But when we pray, we have a chance. We have a chance that his will might not be what, it, what he said it was gonna be private. So he, he might go ahead and go, you know what? I'm going, to, I'm going to exact judgment in a different way. I'm going to change how I exact judgment because Israel definitely was still judged. He didn't completely change his mind. He didn't change his mind at all. Instead, he switched how he was going to deal with them, right? And so um, some, this is why prayer is so powerful that we have to intercede and go, Father, please, if this is your will, if this is your will, maybe the outcome could be um, slightly different. And so this is what Moshe did on behalf of Israel. And it proved to, it proved to be powerful. It changed the dynamic of what could have been, which a lot of people say, Hey, this would have been a lot worse. And this is a picture right here of Moshe praying and he's sitting there praying. He's interceding on Israel's behalf in front of the father. Meanwhile, Israel's in the back acting like complete dummies, acting like idiots back there worshiping and dancing this golden calf. 
They should have known better. Keep that back in Egypt. Should have left that back in Egypt. But instead, Moshe is like, please, 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 please. It's not all of them. Please change your mind, Father. And so this is a, a huge, huge, powerful moment. Um, example of intercessory prayer. Where we're praying on behalf of people. Now, you can't pray just for everyone in anything. But specifically in this moment, what I'm so glad that Moshe did because it changed the, uh, what could have been a terrible, terrible outcome. Now, like I said, punishment was still rendered, but I'm so grateful that Moshe prayed on behalf of Israel. All right, verse 15. It says, and Moses turned and went down the mountain and the two tablets of the testimony were in his hand. So he had the two tablets, he's walking down the mountain. The tablets were written on both sides. And if you don't know what those tablets look like, take a look at this. This is just an idea, okay? The tablets were written on both sides and on one side, on the one side and on the other, they were written. Now the tablets were the work of Elohim. He did this by himself. And the writing was the writing of Elohim engraved in the tablet. So the father touched this and engraved this with his own hand. And Joshua, and Joshua, um, Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted and said to Moses, there's a noise of war in the camp. But he says, it's not the noise of the shout of victory nor the sound of cry or defeat but the sound of singing that I hear. Because Joshua was standing at the foot of the mountain, remember? He left Aaron in charge. Joshua went with Moses. He stayed at the foot of the mountain and Moses went all the way up. So when Moses came down, he's meeting Joshua at the foot of the mountain. The people are still far off. So Joshua's not in the camp. And he's like, hey, I don't know what's going on over there. I hear a bunch of noise, but it sounds like they're singing. What's happening? Here we go. This is where we get into the meat of it. Verse 19. It says, so it was as soon as he came near the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing. And so Moses' anger became hot and he cast the tablets out of his hand and broke them at the foot of the mountain. Then he took the calf, which he had made, which uh, they had made, burned it in the fire, grounded it to powder, and he scattered it on the water and made the children of Israel drink it. Oh my God goodness. He took that calf, burned it, ground it into powder and made them drink water full of gold dust. That had to be awful. It reminded me of like the cinnamon challenge back in the day. It had to be awful. And Moses said to Aaron, what did these people do to you that you have brought a great, a so great a sin upon them? Because remember Moses said, Aaron, I left you in charge. How did you let this happen? What happened? And so Aaron said, do not let the anger of my master become hot. You know the people that they are set on evil. I don't know. It sounds like a cop out. They are set on evil. You know, for they said to me, make us gods that go before us. As for this, Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And I said to them, whoever has any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it to me. I cast it in the fire. And this calf came out. Aaron, that's not good enough, man. Come on, man. Verse 26. Now, when Moses saw that the people were unrestrained, for Aaron had not restrained them to their shame among their enemies, then Moses stood in the entrance of the camp. So think about this. We have a camp and Moses is standing at the entrance. And he said, whoever's on Yah's side, come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together to him. And they, he said to them, thus says Yah Elohim of Israel, let every man put his sword on his side and go in and out from the entrance of the camp and let every man kill his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbor. So the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses and about 3,000 men, we don't know how many families, we just know men, 3,000 men of the people fell that day. And Moses said, consecrate yourselves today to Yah that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day for every man has opposed his son and his brother. Oh my goodness, what a scene. He told the Levi, he told people, hey, come stand with me if you're on Yah's side. And all the Levites came to him and he said, look, you need to go 
execute and kill the people that were worshiping this golden this golden calf. Even though Yah said to Moses, uh, you know what, I'm going to change my mind, I'm not going to consume all of them, somebody still got to die. There are consequences. These things have to happen. And he said, hey, you know what? You know what? Whoever's with me, come with me. You're standing with Yah, go. And that must have been a terrible and horrible sight to go in and, and kill your brother or your sister. But it honestly shines light into some scriptures. I remember reading where it says, you cannot love your mother or your brother more than you love the most high. You have to love Yah more than anything. You can't love your family more than you love him because they could cause you to stumble. They can cause you to sin. They can cause you to transgress his commandments. That means sin, break his commandments. And so even in this moment, the Levites had to go kill their brothers and sisters, their cousins. But at the same time, their cousins were the ones that were that were breaking the heart of the, the Elohim that they serve, of the father that they serve, the God that they trusted in. And so this must have been a very, very hard moment. But at the same time, you do not have a choice because if you have to choose between the father and the people that you love, they have to, the father has to come first. The father always has to come first. And we see that example right here. This must have been a sight. So they were in the camp fighting, fighting. Um, I mean, and that just had to be, that just had to be, well, what a sight to see. From the beginning, it started with shouting and praising to this false Elohim, to Moses making everybody drink this powder. Everybody's got to drink this. Everybody needs to drink this. Drink this nasty powdered water. And then from there, some people had to be executed. Yah used the, the Levites to execute his judgment at that moment. It wasn't the Levites' decision, and I 100% believe it wasn't Moshe's decision. It was the father executing judgment in that moment. 3,000 men or families had to be executed. And that's, um, that's, that's what happens when we sin. There are consequences for our actions. All right, let's read these five, uh, last five verses. Now, it came to pass on the next day that Moses said to the people, you have, com you have committed a great sin. So now I will go up to y'all. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. He says, maybe. I don't know. This is a huge sin. A huge sin. He says, perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Then Moses returned to Yah and said, oh, these people have committed a great sin and have made for themselves a God of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book, which you have written. And Yah said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. Now, therefore, go lead the people to the place which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angel or my messenger shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit the uh, in the day when I visit for punishment, I will visit punishment upon them for their sin. So Yah plagued the people because of what they did with the calf which Aaron had made. So he said, look, for those that that um, those that sinned against me, I blotted them out my book. He says, Moses, I still want you to go and lead my people. Now he says, in the day when I visit for punishment, because I'm coming back to punish these people, right? Moses, I didn't change my mind. I'm just delaying it, and we're going to do it a little bit differently. But I don't change my mind. He says, when I visit for punishment, um, I will. When I come to visit for their punishment, I'm definitely going to visit their punishment. Um, and, and then it also says he plagued the people because of what they did with the calf, which Aaron had made. And we know all about plagues because that's how they got here. Those plagues destroyed the greatest kingdom on earth at the time, which would have been the Egyptian empire. And so he continued, he plagued the people um, as, they, uh, as they continued on in the rest of their story. All right, so I hope you enjoyed it. That was Exodus chapter 32. Uh, there's so much in this chapter. I really, really encourage you to go back, read it, take time, and do line by line. Dive into it line by line. There's so much for us to learn uh, just about Israel's response, uh, worshiping idols and, and, and false deities, how the Father makes decisions, interceding and praying for one another, capital punishment when for certain sins you can't really come back from. This is all important stuff because it's a guideline for how we to live our life. And it gives us an understanding of when, uh, things that we're getting into and what the potential consequences could be. 
And so if you enjoy this type of content, we hope that you would like and subscribe if you haven't already. We love that you subscribe to the Kids Action Bible Show. The best way to support this ministry is you can give a tie using the link below or you can buy some merch and just help and support us. That would be awesome. It just goes to the ministry and all the things that we pay for to keep this thing running. Other than that, we love you. Peace be with you and shalom. See you in the next one.